don't have the right to complain about any decision that's made downtown by your elected officials. Remember, Tuesday, vote. Call the Board of Election to find out the location that you should vote at, and please make it a priority on Tuesday. Speaking about politicians and voting, we have with us the consummate politician, the consummate community activist, one of the best known elected officials in the state of Ohio and in the nation in, in some respects. We have Jack Ford with us this morning. Thank you so much for joining Thanks us. Thanks for inviting me. It is always such a pleasure well, to, to talk to you. Glad to be on here and show. see you again. Thank you so very much. You're looking great. I'm Pretty so, handsome I'm for an old guy. Well, <laughs> <laughs> get on with the show. <laughs> He's speechless. I made him speechless. Right. So, um, there's so much I want to talk to you about yeah. today. Um, so many of your opinions I'm interested in. Can we, can we start out with something pretty generic? Mm -hmm. I, I have been concerned and surprised at the way this current um, mm -hmm. election season is going. I've, I've not quite seen anything like it in this town. Mm -hmm. what, what, your perceptions? I think we're in the age of Twitter and, uh, you know, social media. Uh, all together and so a lot of people who were here before might not have felt comfortable in expressing an opinion can now do it very easily and they are. Uh, in addition this uh, seems to have an undercurrent uh, beneath the surface of uh, some things that I think are unseemly. Uh, there's some racial stuff going on and it's not like normal Toledo politics. I've seen it elsewhere, but not in Toledo. Uh, I'm hoping that most citizens will just go ahead and focus on the issues and the candidates. And You're not saying, though, that if that race is not ever an issue to raise <coughs> in politics. It's just the way that it's raised in this particular mm -hmm. campaign. Well, actually, th uh, throughout our history, race has always been an issue Absolutely. in politics. But uh, it should not ever be used uh, in a negative way to try to influence an election. Now it has, you know, in our history. Uh, but I don't recall uh, Toledo uh, having this little buzz and whispering campaign, uh, at least not in my experience. Yeah, and even beyond the, the issues of race, I mean, there are <coughs> still elements that we've seen in this campaign that we don't normally see we you know the 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 sort of going at each other from the primary forward mm -hmm. has been at a level that that I think actually does a disservice to the process well you 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 had uh, four candidates in the primary that were all pretty um, um, focused and ambitious and um, that had its own dynamic now you have two gentlemen that come both from uh, a paramilitary mm -hmm. uh, background mm -hmm. and they're used to um, being in command, one a union leader, the other one the fire chief, and then mayor. Mm -hmm. And so they're pretty strong personalities. Mm -hmm. And I, I think whoever the next mayor is, is going to be a very strong, forceful yeah. uh, person. Yeah, and there's a lot at stake this time, too. There's, a, there's an awful lot at stake um, for the city, mm -hmm. um, the direction that we choose over these next four years mm -hmm. from uh, not only the mayor's office but from city council as well, mm -hmm. I think will be a determining factor relative to our future. Mm -hmm. um, these are really important. I think we're on the precipice from being either a, um, a small, big city that right. is nice, to live in, or we may begin to slide, slide back, da back <coughs> and not be able to recover. Yeah. And that's why I, uh, I focus so much on housing. Great segue. One mm -hmm. of the things that, that um, I know that you were interested in mm -hmm. is revitalizing some of the communities that, that are struggling mm -hmm. a bit. Well, Toledo has some 50, maybe as many as 60 different neighborhoods, mm. if you break it down. Uh, some by parish, some by area, you know, schools and mm -hmm. so forth. And in the older neighborhoods, particularly the central city and East Toledo, 
Uh, some have been uh, literally decimated by blighted housing mm -hmm. and overall blight, even where there's no house. And unless we do something uh, substantial, I mean, big picture stuff, to turn that around, I think it's going to spread out into other neighborhoods that right now uh, appear to be doing okay. And uh, it has a, the possibility of spreading. And the people who remain in the older neighborhoods have a right to decent um, housing and the ability to go out and look on their fr uh, from their front porch and not see blight uh, and a burned out structure uh, right across the street from them. They have that right. Absolutely. And so we need to really change things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the things that I think is, is absolutely true in this city, it, it seems that, and I've seen it in other cities as well, mm -hmm. that as you say, that blight spreads and mm -hmm. then people move further and further away from it. And then you, you end up with a city that unfortunately becomes mostly blight or a large part mm -hmm. blight when that really doesn't have to happen with mm -hmm. if there's some aggressive and, and creative approach to stemming that. Uh, cities all over the uh, urban cities urban are cities. trying that. Youngstown is very aggressive right now. Uh, Dayton is very aggressive. Uh, one of the problems in Detroit is that they lost population but the population didn't leave the Detroit area. They just went across the line. That's right. And so when you're left, what, you, what was left was a city of um, abandoned homes that still needed the uh, old tax base, but it's gone. It's gone. It's now mm -hmm. across the line. That's right. And so you look at some of our folks. They've moved to Bedford. They've moved to Maumee. They've moved to Oregon even down to Perrysburg. Mm -hmm. A lot of people I know used to live in Toledo mm -hmm. are in Perrysburg. And so they still, you know, work in the plant, still work in downtown Toledo. And then a lot of them moved to Arrowhead to work. But we inside the donut mm -hmm. are suffering and we're going to pay the cost unless we stem the tide and fix the neighborhoods. And, you know, that's such an important point because what I think people don't understand is that without addressing those issues, mm -hmm. you you essentially doom your city to the outcomes that we're talking about. If you lose the tax base, you mm -hmm. can't run the city. Right. And that's exactly what Kevin Orr is finding in, in Detroit. That's that's exactly um, what the, the prior mayors have mm -hmm. found in Detroit. You cannot mm -hmm. run that city if you don't have that tax base. Yeah. So. And I think it spills over into other issues like schools. Uh, serving on the school board for five years gave me a bird's eye view at some of the problems there. It's very clear to me that inadequate uh, housing and the confluence of poverty and race, mm -hmm. all three of those coming together mm -hmm. results in um, poor student performance. Mm -hmm. And if you look at uh, TPS and where the scores are the worst, it is in those precincts that are in, or the neighborhoods that are in the core city. Right. And it also is the area where a lot of our kids have to navigate uh, by burned out, uh, vacant, scary homes just to go to school. Just to go to school every yeah. day, yeah. And when they come back, they have to either live in such a home, um, and it's incredible. You go up in North Toledo, up on Page, Sherman, and some of those streets, and people will be saying, you can buy this house for uh, $200 mm -hmm. and 120 a month payment. Mm -hmm. you know, what kind of house is that? Right, okay. that's right. You know? That's right. And someone's gotten control of the house, or has had it for a while and is just giving it away at rock bottom prices. And uh, again, I'm not trying to pick on that area, but on some of those streets, because I've, I've counted them, there will be 15 to 20 homes in a row that are 
uh, blighted, boarded up, mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. And think of the drain on city resources when, when those issues are not addressed. I mean, <coughs> how do you actually justify sending a trash truck down a street to, to figure out mm -hmm. how many homes he has to collect trash from? And sometimes that's one, sometimes it's two, because the rest of the block is blighted. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's really, um, it's problematic. I assume then that neighborhoods will be one of your one of the major points of mm -hmm. focus for you. The one thing I'm going to ask uh, whoever the next president of council is, uh, is can I uh, chair uh, the housing committee? Um, I, that is one thing I'm interested in. If I can't chair it, then I'm going to ask to at least be on the housing committee, and that's going to be a big thing for me. Um, We've got to do something. Uh, I ran on that uh, really pretty much. This, it's uh, flavored my campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and actually, uh, I think some of us who have pushed blight have really, it's raised to the issue of the campaign. I mean, if you think about it, both candidates are now, for mayor are now saying we're going to fix neighborhoods. Right. Starting out, that was not on the agenda. Wasn't on the agenda. You know, it's interesting. I, th I think, though, that lots of people say that, but very few people have. And, and they've lots have come on this show and said, you know, we've got to pay attention to Central City mm -hmm. neighborhoods or blighted neighborhoods, because not all neighborhoods that are blighted are in the Central City. Mm -hmm. So we need to pay attention to blighted neighborhoods. But very few seem to have any idea about mm -hmm. how to get started. Well, there's things we can do. Uh, now, uh, that, uh, some of them should have been done before. Uh, we, we need to um, find out uh, the incentives people have uh, to uh, not only walk away from houses, uh, but who, in fact, are the absentee uh, owners. We need to stop the ability of folks to strip homes of mm -hmm. copper. Uh, siding and so forth, go to a uh, shop and sell it mm -hmm. with no impunity. Uh, we need to uh, find out uh, who is uh, not taking care of uh, the land uh, around their uh, properties. Uh, th there's just a lot of things we can do much better uh, that we, we haven't. And Hold uh, some folks accountable. Mm -hmm. Hold some folks yeah. accountable. Hold that thought. We okay. need to go away for just a second. We'll be right back. Please stay with us.